Hey, Mary, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? I'm awesome. So ready for this. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I've been studying all night long. Okay, let's great, do it because I'm going to grill you really hard right now. Um, hey, you guys. So um, I'm actually here at the Odin HQ with Mary Ward. Um, she is the co-founder of Counterculture Labs right here in Oakland, which is a small like biohacker space for anybody to come in and do really cool science. Um, they have lots of equipment that people can use. And there's been lots of different projects that come out of it, like open insulin project. Um, what else, Mary? Like what? Real vegan cheese as well. It's a very popular project as well. We're starting to get into plant bio and we'll probably be one of the first biohacking spaces with a BSL2 area. Yes. Um, in addition to that, she used to work at the Odin as well. So she's very dear to our heart. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Mary, awesome. Awesome to see you. Um, so we're going to conduct like this really impromptu interview with you um, just to see where you are and what kind of like biohacking you do and how you contribute to that. Um, so my first question to you is why did you get into biohacking? Well, I uh, first got research experience when I was at the University of Texas at Austin, and I saw a TED talk by Ellen Jorgensen before I moved to California. And lo and behold, there were these spaces where anybody could come in and begin to experiment. I was like, shoot, I know what I want to do. Um, and so that's where it started. It was really quite quite selfish, just a desire to experiment and needing the equipment and space to do it. So as a co-founder of Counterculture Labs, what inspired you to start this biohacker space? Well, the other lab out here, BioCurious, was a three hour commute one way. And there was no way that I could actually participate in science with that commute. So to be perfectly honest, it started off because I wanted my own bench space. But then um, kind of the principles of hacking in general, uh, democratizing the tools and the information around a technology kind of became near and dear to my heart. And so I'm really part of biohacking now, not just to pursue my own projects, but also to make it so anybody can use this technology to explore a world of biology. Yes, sucks, Mary, because like you only bike around slash take the train. So it would probably take you like three hours to get to San Jose from Oakland. Yeah, it took forever. But that's uh, that's where I met. Um, Patrick and uh, he was gave me a lift back home one day. He's like, "Hey, we're making a East Bay DIY bio space. You want to join?" I'm like, "Sure." And then, um, yeah, it just took us, you know, two years to get into a space, and then another year to make it functional. And now it's it's pretty rocking, and we have a really strong community. Um, so that's also really cool. So what can I expect from a place called like Counterculture Labs? Like, what do you guys hope to bring in the future? That's a great question. I think one of the, the most special things about biohacking spaces, rather than being a mad scientist in your garage, is the ability to communicate with other people and work on a project uh, with people from a variety of different backgrounds. Everybody brings their own skills and experience. And to be perfectly honest, um, doing science is really hard and it can be very lonely. Um, the hard part is that it's just to accomplish a science project, most of the time you fail um, and you don't know why. And you can inquire with the internet, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna find an answer because you don't always have the terminology. But being in a community with scientists and other people you're able to um, get those answers from humans and uh, have some of those moral support you need. So All what right, are we going cool. to do? Um, so well, then you, if, okay. what kind of impact do you want to, you know, influence the biohacker community in terms of, you know, like, are you guys going to create like the next 
you know, cancer drug or like, you know, make more synthetic meats. Like what, what is like the purpose of counterculture labs? It's really um, the ability to play. So you mentioned, you know, making uh, like cellular agriculture in vitro meat and then like curing cancer. That's what industry and academia do. Academia cures cancer and um, industry, well, they're looking for the new hot topic uh, to make tons of money. And that is what is limiting to those spaces here. Artists can come in and be like, what happens when I do X, Y, and Z? And then they just do it. There's no, they don't have to be motivated by money. They don't have to be motivated by even solving a problem. Um, they, and so what I see um, in these spaces is really learning um, the full extent of these brand new tools that we have at our disposal. We have no idea where it's going. Um, the common analogy is looking at computers. Computers were first thought they're going to be used for like personal finance. And then they got in the hands of hobbyists. And the thing they did was they made a computer game. And that was just completely beyond any academic or expert. Right. Um, and so it's really hard to predict what's going to happen. But I imagine it's going to be real fun. Awesome. I'm so excited <laughs> for it. <laughs> uh, so excited. Could you imagine like biological video games that you play? It's like a mix of like VR and like haptic like interactions with your body and then you play like in a video game. Could you imagine that? It'd be crazy. Yeah, and I, I just also see making a bunch of new weird foods just because, um, but that's still so practical. This is why I wish I almost never went to school for science because it really wrecked my ability to be creative. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like- Where dreams go to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's the thing and that's the beauty of biohacking is people come in and it's like, hey, why can't we do this? If they went to school, they'd be like, no, that's impossible or you're crazy. Mm. Biohacking is like, yeah, dude, why not? Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. All right, so last question for you before we take off. Um, so imagine we're like, we're 50 years in the future and you're walking through the genetic engineering district. What would you see in some of the shops that you encounter? Well, so we you know there's gonna definitely be um, those gastro artists, right? So chefs are already doing a lot of really interesting molecular stuff with foods that they already have, eating people eating foam. Um, but I think that we're going to see a little bit more of that when chefs come into this place. There's gonna be gastro pubs that are gonna specialize in foods that we've never seen before. I think that, I mean, there's a cool district, so there's gonna be eating. Um, some of the fun stuff, I think that we're going to be able to make completely new life beings. So you're talking about like kind of like role playing games. Well, just imagine if you were able to make like a new creature, right? But because it's not actually real, um, all the ethics go to the side. So it's got cells and so forth, but you have created it in your home lab or, you know, ordered it online and going to pick it up. And then you are able to mesh with this organism that you created. When I say mesh, there's already technology to where we can put a chip in one rat and a chip in another rat, and one rat can take on the maze and the other one can just learn by hanging out in a cage. So we're we're on the way to being able to like kind of mesh with these new organisms. But there's ethics involved with like doing that with like even rats or anything like like furry and cute. But if if it's only your brain, you're just like hacking into like a neural network that's real. Um, imagine just like having that as a kind of a, a play space. Oh, uh, that's crazy. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, um, what, yeah. what is your genetically modified spirit animal? Oh, no. mm. <laughs> This was not on the question list, Esther. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was, it was a curveball. I'm really excited. I, I want to know what your spirit animal is. 
Yeah. Um, I want to be able to throw fireballs somehow. That's just what I really want to be able to do. And if I told you what it was, basically, um, you wouldn't know what it is because it's completely new. It would boggle your mind, um, but it would have it would have wings, and it would be able to spawn like a jellyfish. That's fucking crazy. All right, yeah, that's Mary Ward. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> You're welcome, Esther. It was a pleasure. Thanks, hanging out. Bye.